My name is Jason Drevenak, and I'm the president and head instructor here at the North American Bushcraft School in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. And I'd like to thank you for spending the next two or three days with us while we introduce you to the fundamentals of brain tanning a bear hide. <clears throat> Before we get started with the fundamentals of actually tanning out a bear hide, I would ask you to please comply with all state and federal regulations for harvesting any animals, but in particular Ursus americanus or a black bear. There's a fairly large underground trade and market for illegally harvested bear parts, particularly the gall bladder and the claws. So please make sure if you take a bear, if you harvest a bear, that it's legal and if you obtain a bear hide from another hunter that it was legally taken in compliance with all the state and federal regulations. So I'm assuming that everybody watching this has a little familiarization with tanning, but if not, we'll go over a couple few fundamentals. Now we're going to brain tan today which is essentially using the brains of an animal to tan the hide out. There's a very, a very necessary phospholipid or fatty acid called lecithin, which is going to do a lot of the work for us. Very important in any type of traditional tanning, particularly brand tanning or egg yolk tanning. Ultimately, what we're going to end up is this. This is a sow that I tanned out a few months ago using the same method that we're going to focus on in the next two days or so. She was just a shade under... 250 pounds, almost eh, 300 pounds, I believe. And this is brain tanned and smoked. <clears throat> this is what we're going to hope for. If the weather conditions and all the variables and the planets fall in line, this is what we're going to end up with. <clears throat> and she's wonderful to sleep under. I obtained this hide and the hides that we're going to be working with, primarily all the hides that we work with, from a, from a processing plant in southern West Virginia that does comply with any and all of the state regulations for the size and times of the year to harvest bears. I'm going to set this big girl down. <clears throat> so, here's where we're going to spend the next several hours. As I was saying, lecithin, a very important fatty acid for brain tanning. Now, in no specific order, we're going to start out, which is a very important part of the equation, with a bear hide. This was, I believe it was a shade under 250 pound boar that was taken about five days ago. And this is what's referred to as a green hide, which means it's pretty much right off the animal. And this one was frozen and I thawed him out yesterday, so he was ready to go this morning. Now what tanning is in its simplest form is mummifying or slowing down the decomposition process for the hide itself. The definition of tanning is very, very large, depending on what you want the outcome or the final product to be. There's buckskin, which is removing the hide typically from a white-tailed deer and turning it into a garment quality material that you can make clothing out of. And then there's hair-on tanning, where you would essentially make a pelt or you would make some type of material with the hair on the animal to make a, a blind out of or a garment or a rug or wall hanging or something like that. We're going to be focusing on hair on tanning. And to do that, there are a couple very important steps that must be done before we start to actually tan the hide out. We have to remove all the fat, adipose tissue, membrane, uh, and any meat left on the hide. That's essentially what will, will, will help it to rot quicker. If you've ever seen an animal that, that has been dead for quite some time, the skin is usually left over. Most of the meat and organs and all other parts of the animal will rot other than the bones a lot quicker. What we want left over when it's all said and done is just the hide, or is, is essentially the dermis of the animal. All the adipose tissue and all the fat, all the blood, all of this needs to disappear. <clears throat> Bears are unique in the, in the animal kingdom for a couple reasons. One, the fat, which is one of the most unique substances to outdoors people, to homemakers, to homesteaders that exists in North America. It's a very, very unique type of fat. It's an, primarily an unsaturated fat that has a very, very low melting point. 
Native peoples along with frontiers peoples even today use bear fat to make soap with, use bear fat to finish off traditional bows for traditional archery. Seasoning Dutch ovens and iron skillets is wonderful to do with bear fat. You can make hand creams. All the uses for bear fat is incredible. It's also very, very healthy. Again, because it's an unsaturated fat, it doesn't do to your body what saturated fats do. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, substance. And it's typically rendered at somewhere in the ballpark of about 100 degrees for a day or two to turn it into bear grease. Horace Kephart even talks about it in uh, his woodcraft book back in 1906 about all the different uses for bear grease. So bear grease has been around a lot longer than uh, than European Americans set foot on North America. It's a wonderful, wonderful material. Um, one of the biggest challenges with a bear compared to all the other animals I've tanned in North America, I've tanned most of them on the eastern eastern part of the United States, is removing the fat. Bears and second beavers are some of the most difficult animals to do what we're going to do next is removing the fat. A deer uh, most ungulates, most ruminants, the hair, I'm sorry, the fat comes off in sheets. It's really, really easy to remove. It takes half an hour at most for a 150 pound, 200 pound white tailed deer. A bear, you can't do it the same way. You can't remove it with the same type of tools. You have to typically use very, very sharp cutting tools to do that. The way it attaches to the, to the dermis, to the skin, is very, very different. And it's very, very difficult to do without punching a hole in the hide. <clears throat> so that's that's one of the things that makes a bear very very difficult. Another things that makes a things that make a bear hide very difficult is the skin is very very thin. A deer the same size as this uh, this black bear here skin around the hump and the rump would typically be about three or four times as thick. So you've got a lot more material that you can score or cut into a little bit without punching a hole in it. Um, so bears are a little bit more difficult in that in that sense. And ultimately, what makes actually tanning a bear harder is if you don't remove enough of this fat right here, the, the solution that you use to brain the animal with, if you brain tan it, if you want to egg yolk tan it, it won't absorb into the, into the dermis, which makes it even more difficult because you have to remove down to, down to micro, a micro thickness of the fat to get the, uh, the solution to absorb. So those are pretty much the three things that make tanning a bear hide out considerably more difficult. Now you can commercially tan a hide, which is a very, very different process. You're essentially breaking up the collagen fiber network. You're not keeping it intact and then introducing a solution into it. You're typically just breaking it up and making it soft with more synthetic materials. You can also do that. I prefer the traditional way of doing it like this. It's a lot more labor intensive, but to me it's a lot more therapeutic and honors the animal. Thank you.